alcohol and drug addi addiction is a huge problem in the United States. Here in San Antonio, we have a place where you can go for treatment. It is Soba Recovery Center. And joining us to talk a little bit more about recovery, Tara Connor is here, Miss USA 2006 and recovery advocate. Greg Hanley is the CEO and founder of Soba Recovery Center. And actor Daniel Baldwin is here as well. It's good to see you guys. Good to see you. Thanks for coming back. Happy yeah. holidays. I know it's a real tough time of year for a lot of folks, and we're going to get into that in just a second, but first I want to talk some trending topics because there's some things that I, I read that shocked and surprised me a little bit. All right. Probably not shocking to you because I know you hear it all, uh, but Amanda Bynes, it's been... I think about six years since yeah. she uh, just really struggled with drugs and alcohol and mental illness for a little bit there. Uh, she has recently come out and she is kind of talking about what happened. And there's something that I read in this article and it, it made me think a little bit. Uh, she said that there was a movie that she was in, it was Easy A with mm -hmm. uh, Emma Stone. She saw her performance in that movie mm -hmm. and she absolutely hated oh, wow. the way that she performed. She hated the way that she looked. And that's what kind of catapulted her into this situation. Yeah. And I wanted to ask you about that because I know, you know, young girls, young guys, we all kind of struggle mm -hmm. with that. And we have that situation where you're like, I'm not good enough. Right. I'm not pretty enough. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not, you know, smart enough. Mm -hmm. And is that something that leads to this path for a lot of people? I think that every human being, the two fears that all of us have are the unknown and looking bad. Yeah. And it really, everything boils down to that. And we're so afraid to be honest because we live in a world that you should look a certain way or you should act a certain way or be somewhere. We should ourselves to death. Mm -hmm. And it it's different for everyone, but I remember like, you know, being in pageants and always feeling like I had to be a certain size. Like as a woman, I've gotten yeah. up to like 134 and for a long time, like that messed me up because I was like, wait, I'm supposed to be small. But it's just what society has put onto us and the healthier we get and the healthier I've gotten. I'm like, oh no, I love my body. I love who I am. I love everyone's imperfections is what makes them perfect. How do you deal with those kinds of shoulda, woulda, couldas without turning to drugs and alcohol? Well, I think, I think the thing that, um, at least for me, uh, looking bad or um, uh, what peop people's perception of you or whatever, what it really boils down to is feeling bad. Yeah. So because of those things, you feel bad. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to feel that way. Right. So if you can't change or the, the obvious answer to you is not, oh, we'll move away from the cold weather or do it then you want to do something that anesthetizes those feelings. Right. And that's where the drugs and alcohol come in for me. Right. I didn't like how I felt. There was a lot of reasons why I didn't like the way I felt. But when I didn't feel well, mm -hmm. I immediately wanted to shut that off. Mm -hmm. you know. And the yeah. valve to turn that and squeeze those feelings were, was cocaine for me. Right. It, it, wor it worked it at did. doing that. Yeah. I mean, uh, the preoccupation and the feeling while I was high stopped me from feeling anything. Right. So yeah. the underlying problem, not feeling good, you know? Yeah. And you gotta fix that before you can even get to the drugs and yes. the alcohol. Or yeah, yeah, a lot of people have anxiety. Mm -hmm. uh, they have underlying depression. Mm -hmm. And so they're trying to fix that and be, and be more comfortable. I, I was a very uncomfortable kid and mm -hmm. I had trouble kind of meeting, and we moved a lot, and I was constantly meeting and talking with people. But uh, the drugs, how they get you, is they put you in a cycle where you use them enough to where you're doing bad stuff, mm -hmm. and then you start feeling like a bad human being, mm -hmm. and the only thing that's going to alleviate that is to use the drugs that make mm -hmm. you do more bad stuff, and, right. and it gets worse and worse until you get to a point where you feel everybody would be better off without you. Right. And, and it's the lie. And, and you become okay with that. And, and it's, and it's kind of like that Christmas story movie that you can change it. And you, once you get off of drugs and alcohol, that feeling, it goes away. Yeah. yeah. And it, it takes a while to dissipate and you get a moment 
where all of a sudden you realize that you deserve the air you breathe right. again. Yes. And, and that's a spiritual change that, that comes. So there are people who are watching this morning who, uh, you know, are hearing this and they're like, you know what, that, you're exactly right. At SOBA, you treat the underlying problem yeah. and you do it for more than 30 days. And that's why this works so well for people. And these opiates, it does it to these kids and, and it actually does it to anybody. Mm -hmm. You can be a mom at home that's just taking pills and you know you're taking too many right. and you got to do something and you're so afraid to mm -hmm. get away from the pills or people are find out when they already know yeah and and it's okay to talk and and call and get some information and just let us help you figure this out yeah. mm -hmm. because what I found out is all the things that I tried I never realized that this was bigger than me right and and until I actually had it be me and somebody else that could help me through this, I didn't have a chance. Right. It, and, it, and it just got worse and worse. Speaking of worse and worse, uh, another story that I read was in the mirror and it was about Mel B. And I knew she struggled. Uh, the story was that she tried to commit suicide before the finale of The X Factor back in, in uh, 2014. Mm -hmm. When I read that article, wow, what pain she must have been in and to cover it like people don't understand public life on tv right it's it's hard to hide from people mm -hmm. she managed to fool a lot of people uh but she's doing great now and mm -hmm. i think that is just another testament to the fact that you can be in some really really bad stuff yeah. and still come out on the other side and i think that that fear of like what are people going to think of me mm -hmm. is what prevented me from getting help for a long time but you know i completely understand that idealization of you know if i wasn't here it would be easier yeah. right but when you get to thinking like that that's not a normal thought process so like greg said like you can, i needed someone to sit down in front of me and not tell me I was pretty, that I was going to be fine, everything was going to be great. I needed them to tell me the truth about what was happening with me and my, my ideas and my thoughts. And, uh, and I got that. And I'm so lucky that I had people love me until I could love myself. The other thing I learned too, I sober companion Daniel years ago. And it started out really good, but people want to get high with celebrities. Mm -hmm. And they want to sneak behind the, so there was nothing I could do to prevent it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it was, and it just happened all of a sudden. Because uh, wherever we went, uh, there was somebody going, hey, hey, to yeah. him. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and it was, and I had to leave him in a foreign country. I go, I, I can't, I can't, I can't do this. <laughs> it's, and it was it's, so a, hard. it's a struggle. It's, but it's, people it's, fail and, and they pick it back up. It, right? Listen, it, get, it got down to, I'd walk into the event or the dinner or whatever it was, and there'd be the people in the bar, and all I'd have to see is this. Right. Yeah, just, it uh, uh, a look. Just and I'd be like, my boy, there it is. Up. There's the horse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, look, obviously things are going much better now than yeah. they were, yeah. and it's because of the help of Greg and the help of Soba Texas. I want to give you a phone number if you're watching this morning and you're ready to do something about the struggles. Send a text message, pick up the phone, call, get some information. Uh, they are right here in San Antonio. It's 210-727-2692. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We're chatting with our friends from Soba, Texas. Of course, uh, joining us, Tara Connor is here, Greg Hanley, actor Daniel Baldwin, and actress Myra Leal joining us now as well. Texas gal, thank you so much for coming in. Welcome to San Antonio Living. Uh, so you are a Soba alumni. I am. Tell me how you hooked up with these folks. Oh man, the universe is always conspiring to bring the right people into your life for yeah. sure. And um, so, you know, I uh, did a movie, HOA, mm -hmm. here in San Antonio actually, met Daniel Baldwin, uh, D-Bowl, like I like to call him. D-Bowl. I like it. I like it. I'm going to use that from now on. And basically I was, I was heavily intoxicated most of that shoot. Of that time. Just anytime, yeah. as soon as we were off, I'd go straight to the bar, mm -hmm. wasted then sleep during takes the next day. And so Daniel, um, you know, noticed this pattern and started asking some questions and handed me a script of a film that he had written and wanted to direct. And so um, that one's called Wisdom to Know the Difference, also shot here in San Antonio. And um, anyway, I remember him telling me that
that that movie was going to change my life and um and it did and in the most unexpected ways because i thought oh my god i'm gonna win awards and i'm doing this movie with Sam baldwin and my career is about to change and then really what, what ultimately happened is that i became the woman that i always wanted to become mm. that's so, so good so to much. hear yeah. uh, so when he started asking you questions how did you feel about that? Were you annoyed or were you happy that someone was asking these questions? I think I was secretly happy that um, I could potentially change my life around. I think that's really good to hear. We didn't know each other. Yeah. Yeah. Myra and I didn't know each other. And so we're doing this movie together and I slowly, Alex found me this cool little lake house. Mm -hmm. So I invited this one guy, Andy Bowles, who's in Michael. Don't stay at the hotel. Stay at my house. I've got three bedrooms. So he moved in. He falls in love with another girl that's in the movie. They moved. They're married now. So then the only empty room, and, and, and I thought Myra was like either the coolest laid-back actress of all time or she was in trouble because she'd come to work, and in between every shot, she'd roll up in a blanket, and she'd go to sleep in the makeup room. That's and I'd go in there, and she wasn't in a scene, and she'd be Wheels out turning. sleeping. Yeah. And I'm going, and this went on for you know, the first week and then the second week and finally, I said, why don't you come move in the house because we have an empty room, you know, come stay with us. I wanted to observe what yeah. was going on afterwards. You're on a facility out here. So like now, now, here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> just great. No, well, no. Andy and Faith were normal. You know, they, they just went out. They were young. They went out to, and drank and everything. And Myra come, you know, next day we got to work at 6 and Myra comes rolling at 2 in the morning and I went, Okay, it is what yeah. I found it is. <laughs> so one day, I, I, I took the script, I had written Wisdom to Know the Difference, and ironically, it's this pretty Latina girl who's struggling with heroin, and she's not working that day. And I knocked on her bedroom door, and I went in, and I slipped the script on the bed, and I went, read this today. I said, because you really fit the MO to play this character. I think you could do it. I didn't say anything about it. Well, she called me that day at lunch. She had read it right away, mm -hmm. and she called me, and she was crying. Aww. And she said, how did you know? And blah, blah, blah. I went, <laughs> <laughs> we live we live in the house with me. Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 the days you have to work and I can relate to that. Right. I knew what it was like. I would go out after work on a Friday and I would come back Monday after being up the entire week and having to shoot in the morning. Mm -hmm. I hadn't slept in days. And then the, I, the faces on makeup artists when I would show up, they look at me and they go, Dude, what do you want me to do with that to try to make that look even relevant to what yeah. we're doing? I mean I I'd, I'd be like Hey! <laughs> <laughs> that that's cool. That's, yeah, that's that's I, I remember trying not to breathe on them just so that they wouldn't find me out. I mean, yeah. I definitely was hammered on a lot of shoots. So, like, living your best life now, what does that look like to people who were or are in a similar position? What's on the other side of that? Um, Self-awareness, mm -hmm. um, kindness and gentleness towards oneself. Um, I've grown so much, it's crazy. I don't even recognize the Myra I used to be five years ago or four and a half years ago. Um, I just am so much more present, more grounded, and I'll take that any day um, versus the life that I was li living previously. You know, I was so asleep. So asleep, you know, and, and so unaware of other people's feelings and just so selfish. And I'm just so grateful that I, I, I have the opportunity to just, you know, be loving and caring to myself, but to others, mm -hmm. my family, my friends, you know. It's so fantastic to hear, and I think sharing your story uh, really helps mm -hmm. other people who might be struggling in the same situation, because they look up here and they go, whoa, if these guys can do it, you know, I can do it too. Yeah. And you don't need to go somewhere, you don't need to travel, because we have help here yeah. in San Antonio. Uh, it is Soba, Texas. I'm gonna put the information on the screen for you. Uh, you can text if you're, you know, at home. You can't make the phone call right now. Just send a text. We have people ready to answer your questions right now. It's 210-727-2692. We've got more when we come back. People think courage is simply walking through fear. Courage is not running from yourself. I believed getting sober meant I would lose my edge. Turns out, I was wrong. I only surrendered the things that were holding me back. But all those fears I've faced over the years pale in comparison to the courage it took me to get sober. When you think your world is falling apart, 
It's actually coming together. I have found my freedom and will do anything to protect it. And so can you.
you want to do that with everyone. We're going to give you the phone number again so that you can get this started, guys. It's Sopa, Texas. It's in San Antonio. It's 210-727-2692. Myron, thank you so much for sharing your story. It's wonderful to meet you. Guys, we'll be right back. Welcome back. We brought in Alex Dragici. He's the director of operations at Soba Texas. You're the guy that uh, when Daniel brings someone in, you take them, you show them around, you talk to them. You're also the guy on the phone a lot of the times. Mm -hmm. You know the a guy. The you know the guy <laughs> on the baseball team that can play every position. They call him the utility That's man. That's Alex. That's him. I love that. Fire yard. He's putting them out. He's building stuff. Stop. Stop. This I one. Love it. All but a licensed therapist. Doctor, so <laughs> and you sure. get some of that. I even, you, you can see me out there with a chainsaw sometimes, even cut trees. Clean it up. And wow. So when someone calls, what happens? Um, it starts the phone calls, what we say, or a mm -hmm. text message. And you'll have somebody, a specialist, that actually answers and listens and tries to find out what's going on. If, mm -hmm. you know, if we're the right facility for you, if you even really have a problem, you know, maybe you just... Um, or a college kid that partied for a weekend. That doesn't mean you have a part, you know, problem. That's it's okay to right. be a kid or, you know, mm -hmm. go enjoy yourself. But uh, they ask questions and they do an assessment over the phone and find out, um, you know, if this is right that you do need help. Mm -hmm. And, and so you have room right now. We do yeah. right now. We actually have room. Uh, whether you want to be at the San Antonio facility or in Mesa, Arizona, or Malibu. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. And sometimes you might need to get away okay. from yeah. Yeah. family and friends and trouble, right? And, and, and I think and that's the bonus. And we have that come in and they start at Texas and they realize, you know what, I have a lot of bad friends here who keep trying to come visit me or mm -hmm. pull me out. Right. And they, they themselves decide, you know, I'd like to transfer or go be on the beach. And or I have parents that just go, you know, they Take need to be off. out of town. Yeah. yeah. Myra started here, did 45 days here, and then went to and transferred to Malibu and spent a year in the outpatient sober part. Here's the deal, guys. Yeah. Just make the phone call, yeah. right? We'll yeah. figure it out from there. Right. It starts with the phone call. It's a tough time. It's the holidays. And like we mentioned, everyone that is here today is here to help. It's Soba, Texas. The phone number is on your screen. You can call. You can send a text message. You can also find them online at sobatexas.com. Sometimes we do things for the thrill. Sometimes we do things for survival. There have been different points in my life where I didn't know if I would survive. Seek humility, or it will find you. I have faced many fears, confronted many challenges. Having the courage to overcome the beast of addiction is by far the biggest victory of my life. True victory is victory over oneself.